All right, ladies, welcome back to the Black Girls of Purpose podcast. I'm your host, Brianna Lightfoot-Smith, founder and chief connector at Black Girls of Purpose. And today I have with me uh, a young woman that I got to meet earlier this year virtually through a Facebook community. And I'm sharing that because y'all just never know how your connections are going to come through, um, especially in seasons where you're not expecting it. Um, But I'm so excited to tell you all more about her organization. And so her name is Sharla Walker. Um, Sharla is a pediatric nurse practitioner who, after witnessing the struggles of young women in her practice decided to be the change she wanted to see. Her passion led to her founding Hearts Over Habits, Inc., which is a nonprofit organization aimed to provide life skills and mentorship to young women in vulnerable populations, such as foster care, the juvenile system, and young women in poverty, as well as those who are living in marginalized communities. Charlotte believes that the transformation of a person's heart will impact their habits, and that shapes the Hearts Over Habits programming. She received her bachelor's of science in nursing from the University of Missouri, St. Louis in 2013. And I went to Mizzou, so shout out, graduated in 2013 as well. Um, Her master's of science in nursing in 2017. And she is on track to receive her doctorate, okay, y'all, doctorate of nursing practice from Maryville (laughs) University this coming spring. So I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. Welcome, Thank you. That was amazing. I've never had anybody read a bio of me. And I'm like, whoa, this is my life. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. It's so funny that you say that because literally on the last uh, interview that I did, I was talking to our guests and I was just like, when you hear your bio, are you like, wow, that's really me? You know, how do you, how does that feel? Oh, you're like, God, who is she talking about? She talking about me. (laughs) That's so funny. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. You went to Mizzou. I did go to Mizzou. Yes, yes. 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 Wow. Got my graduate, uh, my degree in journalism. And um, that was another thing I was talking to another guest about, just how I went to Mizzou to get my degree in journalism because I wanted to write for Essence Magazine. And uh, now all these years later, I have this podcast and God was like, hey, you said you wanted to do inspiring stories about women of color. Here you go. And you get to do this long form journalism and you get to do it on your own platform. So it's pretty exciting. Yes. Good old Missouri. Emo's Pizza and White Castles. (laughs) Right. I'm like, yeah, I I still try to be leaving White Castle in my past. I can't even lie about that. (laughs) Yeah. Only when we go to visit am I like, so White Castle. (laughs) (laughs) Right. No other time do you want it. Mm -mm. That's funny. So share a little bit more about yourself with our listeners and um, and honestly with your nonprofit journey because you just you just started it last year in 2019, correct? Yes, yes. So God is just amazing. Let's just start with that because had you told me, um, you know, at even at graduation from nursing school, if you would have told 23 year old Sharla that, hey girl, you're gonna hold nonprofit, you're gonna be doing all these things. I would have laughed because honestly, um, especially when for young women, I am the second oldest of four girls um, in a military family and I am the tomboy. So, you know, for me to want to deal with girl like women, I'm like, God, first, this has to be the Lord because <laughs> I am not, this is not what I do. Um, so my husband and I actually moved from St. Louis um to tampa just kind of on a faith move that god had told us to move it was it's a whole story in and of itself sold our house on craigslist packed up left our job left our family it was a whole thing um and we came to tampa and in that time he just really started putting on my heart to step out and do the things that he's called me to do and so Um, I didn't know what that looked like at the time. It was kind of topsy-turvy, but I ended up working where I work now, which is a federally qualified health center. And I knew I wanted to work with underserved populations because I just have a heart for the people. Like, that's just, I like, I just love working and taking care of people who look like me. So that way, you know, if I have to get one of my teenage girls and say, look, sis, don't have me snatch your edges out here. Okay she knows what I mean and she can receive that wholeheartedly when I say come in my office cutting up I'm gonna snap I'm gonna have to snatch you so you don't <laughs> you don't want that and they love it because I'm I'm being for real and so I love that part but the more and more I would talk to these girls because they look like me I take the extra time that they may not get with other people to really look at their health past just your height and your weight, which all of those things matter. But I'm like, okay, you're 16, 17. 
what grade are you in? What is the plan? And so I had enough of those conversations. Um, God has given me enough words. I will never forget the day I was talking to one of my girls and she was crying because I was just talking to her and pouring into her and she cried and she stopped mid cry, pulled her eyelashes off and was like, continue. That is what I knew. <laughs> I was like, hold on, God. <laughs> she took the eyelashes off. This is the thing. Um, and so through that, a lot of the girls I, I see um, are in foster care um, and getting ready to age out. And a lot of them honestly are not getting the things that they need from the system. So they don't know that there's programs that'll help pay for their schooling. Nobody sat down with them and said, this is what's important and this is why. Nobody has sat down with them and said, hey girl, don't be giving your body away to all of these boys because you're God's daughter, you're tragic, but they haven't had that. And so when they, when they get a piece of that, I've gotten so many girls ask me to mentor them, to mentor them, to mentor them. And I wanted to do it. God had really started putting it on my heart for me to do it. And, um, at first, I would like skip lunch and, you know, take extra time in a room with a patient. Um, but then I saw that there was a bigger need. And I'm like, okay, God, so how am I going to be in all of these places at once and still be able to work? I'm in school. You told me to go back to school because I was like, I'm done. And he was like, you're not. <laughs> you told me to go back to school. Um, and he was like, We're, you're going to take this online. This needs to be because a lot of these girls, especially in foster care, are going from place to place. They don't have continuity. They don't, they don't have continuity in the homes that they're in. They don't have continuity in the schools. They don't have continuity with their health. And so pre-COVID, our program was online already because the idea was that I was, I'm going to build this community. I'm going to build this program. And no matter where life takes them, they will still be connected to us. And so we can be a constant thing in their life. If they ain't got nothing else, they had a phone child because they act like they cannot live without it. <laughs> they cannot live without it. So um, it, it came out of the notion that, you know, we hold a lot of these girls in the younger generation, women, young women, I keep need to stop saying girls, but I can't help myself. Um, they, we try to hold them responsible for stuff that has never been taught to them. So, you know, we stick our nose up and we laugh at them about when they get flued out. But honestly, what else do they know? All they know is what they see. A lot of times all they know is um, what they've been taught by social media. And so in, instead of condemning or judging i'm like we gotta fix it so if we're not helping we're a part of the problem and i want young women to know that you don't have to be perfect before you come to god like god if you just are willing with a submitted heart to come to him and say you know what because in this same conversation i had to have with him you know what sir i've been trying to do this my way it's not working <laughs> have do do what you will and as you continue to walk with God, your habits will change. It's it's not, so that's really how that whole thing started was I, I'm not going to sit here and hold these young women accountable for information that wasn't freely given to them. Um, and, but then like, you know what, we should be giving them this, this information, um, especially young women who were in foster care. And so they, they already are at a disadvantage or, you know, they may you know, have dealt with the juvenile justice system, they're already at a disadvantage. And so trying to create a place where they can safely learn um, in a community that really loves and cares about them. Mm. I mean, we only like a few minutes into the interview and it's already just you preaching and stuff like that. Okay. So a few things you said stuck out to me. One, not holding them to ac accountable to, for things that they don't even know. Um, God really placed that on my heart this year uh, because I think as the church, there was a lot of criticism of the way that people were rioting, you know, put, uh, setting police cars on fire and God was like, you you all are holding them to your standard as Christians. He said, you know, not, He's like, a lot of the people who are burning cars down, they're not my children. So you can't go and say, oh, they shouldn't be doing that. Okay, they're frustrated. They mm -hmm. don't have me. And so yeah. they're, 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 they're venting in the way that they know how to vent or that they've seen to be, you know, to mm -hmm. other people to vent. So don't hold them to that standard because they don't know what it's like to pray and get perfect peace or, you know, the, the, the laws and stuff that you're holding them accountable to. They don't, 
they don't have that same thing. So that's one thing you said. But then another thing that stood out to me was that you were not seeking out to start a nonprofit. You just were blooming where you're planted. And you were also even strategic about asking, okay, God, how do you want me to go about this? Because one, I, and I knew this already about your program, that it was virtual before COVID. So shout out to God who was like, yes, sis, you don't want to like, go with it's in person. Coming. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> he was like, no, really, you need to do it online. So that's one, he's so amazing. But then two, specifically serving your audience. So even saying what, and I know a lot about the foster care system because my aunt owns a, a foster care and adoption agency, but for you to be able to say, okay, even if we had in-person programming, they might be here for some months, but then now they're in a whole nother, not just city, a whole nother state. And so now that connection is lost. And a lot of times in foster care, they're not able to have their phones on them, you know, or, or, or there's like a, a, a period of time where they can't have their phones. They don't have that same connection that they had with their school. So, okay, if we only offer the programming through the school, now they don't go to this school anymore. Mm -hmm. And so they, again, they, they've been lost. So I just love that intentionality about making it um, virtual. But I know that you were not, again, right off the top, you were looking for other people to help and understood like, hey, this can't just be me. No. And so tell me how you decided to find people to help with your programming because that's actually how I ended up meeting you as you posted in the Facebook group like hey we need some mentors um who's yep. gonna help me um god I, I learned that a lot of times what we do um as the the notion as black women is that we don't help each other right so that that is the stereotype it's like we don't help each other you know, what you see on TV is what is portrayed. And so everything that I really do, um, you know, this is God's organization. It's not even mine. He's just allowing me to steward over the resources that he's given me. And so um, I knew that one, my life experiences are my life experiences, right? And so a lot of these young women, they have different life stories. And I know that there are people that can relate. I don't have any children. Um, I helped raise my siblings. I'm an auntie of plenty. I got these two dogs. I got a whole husband. But right now, I don't have kids. But there are single moms that I'm going to serve. And so I can help them to a certain point. But then I know that there are other people that God can connect them with that will be able to really empathize with their story that are, you know, that are of God and can really help them in a way that I can't. So it's really just understanding that, one, I... I don't have to do it all, right? Like, so God wants us, we're the body of Christ. We're not, it's not just the arm or the eyeball. Like we all are the body of Christ. And so it's just really important to know um, that God never, he will send the people that belong, right? So he, you know, if he, there have been ideas, I'm like, okay, God, so check it. This is what I think we should do. And he's like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no reel it back in um and really he is he has done that even over you know through COVID like he's he has given me so much more um because I'm learning how to do this honestly as I go and so just understanding one I'm only one person two that God's God's burden is easy and his yoke is light and three that he's going to give me everything that I need and I think that sometimes we get called to these things and when we when God gives us the vision, sometimes it can be so overwhelming that we don't move. And so I did not want that. I'm going to keep moving because I know that delayed obedience is still disobedience. I also know that if I don't do it, God's work is still going to get done. He'll just pick somebody else. So um, to answer the question, it's just understanding that it's a, this is a body, understanding that the vision that God has given me there are black girls and white girls and Latina girls and, you know, they all come from, you know, the single moms that have where God's going to come in and change their life through this organization. And I know that I need women that are in place spiritually um, that have different life experiences, because like even when we talk about career choice, I can't tell them about being a teacher. I'm a nurse. <laughs> I started out as a nurse. I went back to school to be a nurse practitioner. I'm going back to get my doctorate. So if you want to be a nurse, I got you. I mean, I could help you 
with your FAFSA <laughs> because I've done that so many times. But honestly, to have a mentor that's in education to give you the, the ins and outs and to really guide you, even that in and of itself, that you know everybody's not gonna be a nurse. So I need to connect the organization with people um, from all different walks of life. Some girls I talk to, they wanna go into cosmetology. And so I have a friend of mine who I know knows the Lord. Um, she does my hair and makeup. So I know she has the skills and I know she has a heart for young women. And so she's able, I'm able to say, cool, I got you. We have somebody who can help with that or who can give you some insight on that because I don't have to do it all, right? So God calls us to be good stewards over our resources and, you know, relationships and, and different people that you're connected to. You can lean and rely on those people the same way like Moses had Aaron, like, okay, Moses wasn't strong in this area. So he had somebody to, to help push forth God's vision. I love that you use the example of Moses and Aaron, primarily because I think that sometimes we feel like if we're not strong in one area or, you know, we don't have all the pieces to get started right now, then maybe we shouldn't be doing it. And God's like, no, you don't necessarily need to do this part of it, but you are still like the visionary. And one of my friends, mm -hmm. that's what she calls her. She doesn't call herself the founder um, of, her, of her organization. She calls it the visionary. Like, God gave me the vision and then I'm just putting together yes. the different pieces. And I love that. Me too. I'm like, go oh, ahead, yeah, girl, do it. You a big yes. Um, But what I really appreciate is that, again, even going back to the body of Christ part, like that's really where your faith has to come in and you understand, okay, Lord, if this is the vision that you've given me, you're going to give me the resources that I need to do it. Um, so speaking of resources, I know that you all won the National uh, Mentoring Resource Center grant uh, to assist with your mentoring program. So tell me a little bit about the application process, because I know grants were a big reason why I didn't even want to start my nonprofit that I started, Unity Queens. But then also tell me how it felt to find out that you actually received the grant. First thing, like God is so good, because when I tell you it, I was like, oh, wait, okay, so you want me to start a mentoring program and so it just was me like google how to <laughs> how to start a mentoring program right so sometimes people think that it's this big deep like it was like no nah, i googled and was just looking for resources i'm a really firm believer in systems and i think a part of that is me being a nurse everything has to make sense there's a rationale for everything there's an answer for everything and there's a system there's a way that you do your assessment there's a way that you do this and i'm like I need to have a system in place. One, because the way that my life is set up, that I need this to function smoothly. Two, I know that there are people who are mentors who've been doing this that I can glean information from because I have not done this. And I know that the population that we're looking to serve have been disappointed and hurt by so many people. And what I will not do is step out and do anything in God's name and not do it in a way that is integritous and that does is not, um, you know, does, that does not show his excellence, right? So I need to make sure that when I come, I come correct. So I went and I found um, the National Mentor Resource Center and I saw that they had a grant and it was a technical assistance grant. And I was like, I need assistance for the show. So let's, let's do the application. And so really um, it asks you just who you're looking to serve, what kind of people um, and population you're looking to serve. Um, it, it asks you like, how prepared are you? It, it makes you do a, a valuation of where you are. And I was like, we're not, because we're just getting started. <laughs> so, you know, being honest and, and doing that, and then you kind of write, you know, what your vision is, um, what you're looking to do, how you're looking to do that. And then um, it took two months before we heard back from them. And I Honestly, I had, I did it one morning. I remember doing it because I did it one morning. I wake up early, really early um, because I know, like I said, I work full time. I'm in school. I have a husband. And so I have created my own office hours between four and 6 a.m. Um, because my husband gets up for work that early. And so I remember finishing it, getting ready for work. And I, I honestly was like, we'll see what happens. And I found out two months later, hey girl, you um, received this grant. And I was like, praise God. 
<laughs> like praise, like hit the praise dance music right now. Um, and then, so it took about another month for them, you know, we had to sign the MOU and, um, you know, kind of do all the paperwork and the final, like, you know, finalizing. Um, but it, it was a federal grant and they provided us with a, um, an, like an assistant. So we got X amount of hours of help. And when I tell you, her name was Sally. Miss Sally blessed me so much. E-mentoring is pretty new. And what I love, the, the nurse in me was like, everything they gave me was evidence-based. Because if anybody ever asks us, why are you using this? Why are you doing that? I like to have like evidence-based practice is at the heart and soul of every nurse. I need to be able to provide you a rationale to say, no, the way that we're doing this, this has worked for other people. And to, again, make sure that we are providing continuity, that we're, we are stable, that we're not just, you know, everybody is kind of getting um, an individualized experience, but the foundation is the same. The system is the same um, to make sure that everybody receives quality. The biggest thing, I've seen a lot of mentoring programs, I want it quality and I want it for God's excellence to be on display, the level of love that he has for these girls to be on display. And I wanted that to be seen in how we um, do our program. And I was able to talk to Miss Sally and she helped me get so many parts that you don't think about if you are not in nonprofits. Like she's like, first of all, you need a manual. And I was like, Touche, <laughs> right? And so she was able to give me a lot of, we did a lot of groundwork. So I, I think what is really important too is when you start, don't feel like tomorrow you have to be on the gram. Like there's so much groundwork, even now, especially with COVID, we're almost 12 months in and and again, we've had, we've kind of overhauled and now we're, we're doing more groundwork again. And I'm so grateful for this season because God is, God kind of was like, pause, let's look at this one more time. And the groundwork that I, I um, received assistance with is now built on because we applied for another grant, which we'll find out hopefully by the end of the month, if we got it or not, but that allowed us to allow me to find a curriculum that was evidence-based. I was like, come on God. <laughs> Come on, so it, he's building the system. And when we are able to, um, because we're, we're working with the foster care system here in Florida and pre uh, BC before COVID, we were on, on a roll, but everything is kind of, <laughs> everything is kind of stopped. Uh, let's um, just pause, let's just pause because sis just redefined BC, <laughs> not before Christ, before, before COVID. COVID. Okay, just go ahead and go ahead and uh, Before COVID. I want y'all to, if y'all start hearing that, that's what we're talking about. Okay, cool. Yes, BC before COVID. Um, but it, I was disappointed because I was like, God, we're supposed to have this and this and that. And he said, look at it again. So I, I'm grateful for this time because it's allowing me not to perfect it because it's not going to be perfect, but to ensure that God's excellence is on display when we are, when we really get out here, the way that he has told me that this is going to go. Because at first I was like, I'm going to just do this down here. I live in Tampa, like Tampa about to get this. And he's like, no, no, no. Everybody's about to get, <laughs> you know, everybody's about to get this. And so in doing that, um, doing that foundational work is so important, right? If you think about Noah and the ark, like if he had not built it correctly, <laughs> it, it would have been, it would have been gone. He built probably for longer than, you know, us, it's a couple pages, but who knows how long it took him to build that ark and for him to really be focused on the word that God gave him and to hold on to that, even when people were probably talking about him, probably calling him crazy, probably saying all these things oh you doing the most it ain't gonna rain that much whatever things you know whatever things that you hear and then the rain came and then you know, so, and he wasn't worried so i really think that you know that grant was very instrumental in parts of the organization that may, may never be seen on display but it it was it was god's grace man in his favor and even um miss sally she was a believer so she was like oh I, I love how you she's like i'm just so energized she's like even after this if you need anything and so when i needed a reference letter for the grant that we applied for in july 
she was ready and willing and able to write this this recommendation and so god has really just been showing out in ways that are mind-blowing i love that um and i say that after so many questions and i know my listeners be like brie can you give a different answer but it's important because and and it's true like i really do love um the process and i love the intentionality and um i think I love that you talked about foundation because I think, especially as a nonprofit and, you know, not to say, uh, cause I have a nonprofit and I have a business and not to say you shouldn't be intentional as you're starting a business. But mm-hmm. I will say with a nonprofit, especially because you're looking to get funding, it's a lot more important early on to have that foundation in place because the grant applications are going to ask you who you're, target audience is, how you're reaching them, you know, what outreach you're doing already, who you, who you work with already. Like data is so important in the nonprofit space and being able to say, okay, they're like, okay, well, what are your success markers? How are you tracking the success of your program? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, y'all, in the same way that your customer for a business wants to see results from the products that they purchase for you, your donors want to see that the money that they're giving you is actually being used for something. And so right. um, having that foundation in place, I think is really, really key. Yeah. Um, and even with you talking about evolving, we've talked so much about evolving this month on the podcast, but I think that evolution piece is really important as well, because sometimes we launch things and we think that the first version is going to be the last version and it's just not mm-hmm. the case. And it's okay. Like, yep if you're really committed to excellence, you understand and you almost, you almost get excited whenever you go through those rebranding processes yes. or those restructuring processes, because you realize, Oh, we only going to get better. Like I yes. thought this was great. And God telling me, no, we leveling up. So, um, I, I just, I just really appreciate you giving that much of an in-depth look at, you know, what your process was with even getting started. And I love that that mentoring grant was not just a, Hey, we're going to write you this check, but we're also going to give you like, human capital Mm -hmm. in having this person who can help you with your organization that was such a blessing because she gave me so much like not like knowledge is better to me than money right i i said this earlier um that i can teach you how to fish and honestly and that's how i i really how i feel about these girls i can feed you right? Like you can come to the office. I can tell you the things I can feed you, but I don't want to feed these young women. I want to teach them how to fish because they need to be able to feed their families and then they can go teach their friends how to fish. And it's a whole thing, right? It's a ripple effect. I had to really get comfortable with even being in spaces like this where people are like, I'm the founder. Somebody um, had told me, I think it was, I think it was Sally that I needed my picture on the website because people want to know the founder. And I was like, no, <laughs> right? Because that makes, I, I am very intentional. Like this is, this is God's thing, but God has really been working on me with like, you need, you're, you are who I pick. So when I ask you to speak, speak, when your face is somewhere, you need to be there. Um, and so being okay with that and understanding that, you know, the same thing that Miss Sally did for me. If I start another organization, which I'm, I am going to because God is just like, girl, and guess what else? You about to open this clinic too, that's a nonprofit. So you can serve and take care of those teen moms and their babies at the same time. And I'm like, come on, <laughs> come on, God. Um, but now I know what things I've learned, right? So they could have just wrote me a check and that would have been a blessing too, but I've learned that. Um, you know, the evidence-based stuff and what things to have in order. I mean, I have, she gave me papers and forms and templates and just so many things and resources that I can utilize. So now not only can I fish, but if somebody came to me and asked, I can say, apply for this grant. This was amazing. It really, really helped me. And then the website has other free resources. And so that knowledge and that sharing of wealth, I feel like sometimes we lose that. Um, I feel like sometimes we don't value, we don't value sowing seeds enough sometimes in our culture, right? So people, when they come and ask me questions, I get full answers, 
Um, I want you to, like, if you really want to know, I really want to help you. And I struggle because I understand that, you know, some people, their knowledge, that is their capital. And so they want to get paid for that. But then I, I also believe that when God tells me to bless somebody and to give them that knowledge, that he's my source. And so my blessings come from him. So it, it is, you know, that culture of like, let me tell you what I know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you everything. I'll tell you about uh, school, this, that, um, because with that knowledge and the unique plan that God has for you, you can go and produce something different. We can't be afraid of uh, somebody trying to almost like copycat or in or counter whatever we call it, duplicate what we're doing because they're called to a certain space too. I'm called to a certain space. You're called there's you know there are people assigned to your life that are different than assigned to my life. And if we're really all just about God's business and not our own, we can do great things. He'll take care of the rest. Yes. Um, I shared this on, I, it's just funny how a lot of these conversations are blending. Um, but I, I was talking about the scripture in the Bible that talks about who, to whom, um, when you're given more, like the person who has more, they'll receive more. And then for the mm -hmm. person who doesn't have anything, even what they have will be taken away. And I always thought that God was talking about money. So I'm like, how can you take away money that I don't have? I don't understand. But you know, when I went back and was reading it in the full context, that, that scripture is talking about like knowledge and, mm -hmm. and, and, and knowledge of God specifically, but then you can yeah. apply that to the same knowledge of anything else. So he's like, mm -hmm. Hey, if you want to get to know me, if you, the more you know about me, the more you'll know about me, right? But if you're yeah. not even trying to find find out more about me, then you won't even know what you know, if that makes sense. And so yeah. when you were talking, that's really what kind of came to my head because I think that, um, yeah, we are sometimes not as, and you have to use discernment because like you said, sometimes guys like tell them, I don't care. I know you would charge for this normally, but whatever, tell them anyway. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll start to tell people something and I feel like Holy Spirit will be like, shh, mm -mm. be quiet. Yeah, be quiet. Mm -hmm. So you have to use discernment. But another reason why I don't think we should be so withholding with our knowledge is that just because you, you could lay out the game plan for someone, but they still have to apply it. Like, and, and for me, if you are listening to me and you take that and you turn it into action, boo, go with it. Okay. God like you. run with it fly with it, you know, and, 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 and again, you still have to come back to in prayer. Cause I know someone who that, that happened to them. They shared some knowledge with someone and they were doing what, what the same thing. They just shared their same process and their business ended up being a success using the same steps they use for their business. So you can kind of be like, Lord, they just took the knowledge I gave them and they turned that into, you know, a sponsorship deal or whatever, or they got this new celebrity client and I'm still over here in the dark places. But what we don't know is people's journey before they even got to us. Yes. And so you just really have to understand, like going back to what you said, sowing seeds, even if you don't see the fruit of it in this particular season, it doesn't mean it's not coming. And what someone has also helped me understand is that it may come back to you in a way that you weren't expecting. So yes. it may just come back to you in knowledge from someone else that's mm -hmm. further than you are, where you may think you got it all together. You're like, oh my gosh, Lord, thank you for blessing me. Yes, exactly. Or an opportunity. And so that, that really is my thing. Um, that and one of my favorite stories is the the story of the um, like the parable of the talents, right? The five, the two, and the one. I feel like sometimes we feel like, oh, I can't do all these things, right? So that's kind of me because honestly, when people like you know, I talk about my friend who does hair and makeup, like that's not my gift. Um, I can make a real strong PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> but I can't do, you know, makeup and things. Th those things aren't my gifts. And so I almost for a while felt like, okay, God, I'm, you know, I used to say, I hate when people say this now, but like, I'm just a nurse, like, you know, but the, it, that even of itself is a talent and a skill. And the, these last couple of months, God has really just been growing me to show me the talents that one that we kind of sleep on and the fact that even if I had one talent, I'm responsible for that, that I'm responsible to, to, to grow that thing, to use that. 
um, to even put it in the big account so it gets some interest, right? Because God wants a return on his investment. He's, you know, he gives them according to our abilities to handle it. And the thing that we have, if we're faithful with a few things right now, we don't have this huge grandiose following, but I'm faithful with the people that are attached to us because those are God's people. I told God in the beginning of this, if one girl, <laughs> if one girl comes to me and is like, girl, you changed my life. I've done what I came here to do because we get so caught up on the numbers and we want to be successful. But I think that my idea of success had to change. Success to me is well done, my good and faithful servant. I know I want my bills to be paid. I want this, I want that. But true success to me is well done, my good and faithful servant. That's really all that matters because everything here is going to go away. Everything here is going to pass away. The followers are going to pass away. My dad had said to me one time, um, he was military, he's been to Iraq a couple of times. And he said the kind of the turning point for him was realizing that one day he would be, a, he would be somebody's memory. And so I took that and I'm like, you know what you write. And so now when people, um, when I encounter people, the way that I leave people feeling, the way that I'm able to touch people's lives, that does way more than me being able to give you money. Um, that does more for me than the amount of likes that are on my Instagram. It's the stuff that people don't see that I do, um, that I know that God is very pleased with. And, and that's the legacy, right? So we're, we're building legacies, we're building organizations, but this is really, you know, our legacies. The, the, you know, our children's children are going to be blessed by the decisions that we make now, not just in the natural sense, but even spiritually, that hopefully, you know, I'm able to do enough to where people are like, oh, you Charlotte Walker's kid? Come on, I got a seat for you. <laughs> I got a seat for you because I'm, you know, I'm just being obedient to God. That same favor is really what helped people like Joseph, right? He went from, from the people that talk from the pit to the palace, but all that stuff in between, like he didn't went to jail, he got lied on. We love that story. But when you really look at it, it's, it's going to be hard. There have been days when I've cried. There are people who I thought that, you know, were supposed to be connected to the organization that shouldn't have, and we had to part ways. But overall, it's just this beautiful journey that God is taking me on to not only show me what I can do to help other people, but for him to reveal who I am to myself, right? Because the Bible tells us he, he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. And then we grow up and, you know, life, parents, school experiences, life happens. And we can kind of come into this place where we have this identity crisis. And God is really using this to show me like, no, nope, you can go out and talk about me. That's what you can do. <laughs> that Like you, you're good. You're good at this. And I'm like, I mean, I guess, <laughs> right? And getting comfortable in that space. And I just want to be able to empower other young women to do the same. I don't want it to take them as long as it took me to figure it out. I don't want you to have to fall 10 times before you realize like, oh man, you know, I could do this different or I could do that different. And so that really is what is most important to me um, is making sure that the legacy that we leave, the knowledge that we leave you know, the messages that we leave when we're not here, what, what is our true legacy? What are people going to say about their encounter with us? Um, that to me is far greater than the money and this and that. And not to say like, you know, at some point I want to work for my organization full time. So that's not saying that I don't want to be successful, but my, my true success comes from what God says about it. Just so good. Just so good. So um, that was actually my next question was that you do t speak about God very eloquently and very easily. And, and I can tell you read your Bible. Uh, so I want to know, not just about like, how, when did you accept Jesus? But when did you develop a passion for Jesus? Because I know for me, um, that passion came honestly, in a season when I was working in team ministry, and I'm like, dang, you know, I can't be telling you to love Jesus if I just feel kind of uh about him. <laughs> so tell, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your, your faith journey. So, you know, people always talk about, well, well, first things first, I have to give credit to, I have two praying grandmothers who really bless my life. My dad's mom, I always tell people I had the best of both worlds, because my dad's mom, 
she is, you know, she'll make you the cookies. We used to watch The Prices Right together. <laughs> like, she'll do all of those things. She's the sweetest. I, I get, I have her, her heart. She will give you the shirt off of her back and she loves the Lord. And then I have, so I call her my granny. My mom's mom, um, she, um, I call her my Gigi. She is like, she will pray for you, but she will also let you know now I said what I said <laughs> and, and she, that, so that, um, that boldness I get from her. And so I've always known God and my grandmothers have always told me, you know, that they're praying for me, that, you know, God had so much more in store for me, the, you know, the things that grandmas say <laughs> because they be knowing. <laughs> um, so I always knew God, but I wasn't saved, saved. I, I say save, save, because when you put the extra one on it, that means you are really walking this thing out. Um, and God really started revealing himself to me after I left home and went to um, school. And through all of that, I met my husband and I was 25 and I love my husband dearly, but I was like, <laughs> this is so, the, the, the time I decided I was going to submit my life to Christ was because I was getting so frustrated in my marriage. So we both had good jobs. We had a house, we had the cars, we had all the things. And my, the realest, I would say it's the realest prayer I ever prayed. I was like, look, God, come get your son. Cause I'm about to send him back to you in a box. I really don't know what else to do here. <laughs> like, you know, this is crazy. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like you gave me this person. Um, and of course, through all of this, you know, we weren't really, we were doing the, like we would go to church, but we weren't really walking this out. So it wasn't like, you know, we didn't do all of the, the foundation work. <laughs> There's that word again. And so even in our marriage, God had to come take this, let's re let's redo all of this um and it was through that that i really started walking with him there were times in nursing school like i'll never forget this time i didn't study for my psych exam because i had to work i was working full time and going to nursing school and i got the class early and i was like god i am not ready for this test um help me and the power went out in the building <laughs> and the test got rescheduled to the next week <laughs> i was like Glory. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, you be out here helping me for real, for real. I was there two hours early. I was like, God, just help me with this test because I have not just, he will honor whatever you give him. And that is what's so amazing about God. He will honor that like that realest prayer I ever prayed. It's not cute. I wasn't out here speaking in tongues. I was like, please come get your son <laughs> because who shall let like come get your son like i don't know what to do and really it that began that journey and god the whole time was really dealing with me because i'm responsible for Sharla, husband is responsible for husband and he was dealing with him but god was like well first off <laughs> and the way god talked to me sometimes i'm like okay let me pick my edges up and then we'll continue this <laughs> one second but he told me you're so loud that he couldn't hear me if he wanted to because you won't stop yelling. <laughs> I'm like, but he deserved it. <laughs> he deserved me yelling. <laughs> and so it was through that that God really healed me in so many areas of my life um, and really just kind of pulled the fruit was being those being bared that my and the seeds that my grandmothers had planted, honestly. And you know, there were times throughout that that time where I was in school and undergrad where, you know, I'm listening to sermons and I, I felt myself really being pulled closer to God. And that was kind of like that watering season. And then when I was like, come get your son, he was like, let's go. You ready now? You ready? And so it's been this beautiful journey of just find, you know, God changing our, literally changing the scene for us, pulling, you know, having me grow up because who, my friend bought me a shirt for my birthday. <laughs> my birthday is uh, somewhere between knuck if you buck and praise is what I do because that was me. <laughs> like, like I've always been sweet and caring and this and that, but uh, my mouth was, wow, it was impressive. Um, so God has really just 
moved me and has really grown me into the person that everybody sees and it has really been beautiful and i think that once you really get to know god for yourself because you have to you have to go off of your experience with God and not what everybody says. Like my grandmother's faith alone was not gonna be enough to get me into heaven. Like, cool, your grandma prayed, but if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're not getting it. <laughs> like, like that, you have to do it yourself. And so I had to kind of throw away some things, you know, that I, I had been taught by other people about who God was um and really learn God for myself for him to then show me who I was and it's just been beautiful and then I get so excited because I'm like this is dope like you need this like you want to be like me you don't you want to be like <laughs> you want to be connected to God because every good and perfect thing that has come to me and through me is because of him like i 30 year old me and 17 year old me would have been fighting like girl shut up <laughs> like, what is wrong with me? like girl you always got something to say and i'm sure those are some of the girls you see come through your practice where god's like you know that's yes. you right do you know that's you yes like. <laughs> and they laugh but you know what i tell parts of my story to them because a lot of times what happens is they can't relate they, and they feel like we can't relate we sometimes are so afraid of our past, but the Bible tells us that we're made overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So yeah, I'm gonna tell y'all about how, like, look, there was this girl on the bus, she had said something to me and then I beat her up and, and they laugh. And I'm like, so I get, so when the girls come to me and they're angry, I'm like, I get that you're mad. I get that you feel disrespected. What I'm telling you is that as an adult with like me with a nursing license, people are still going to disrespect you and you have to respond differently because if not you will end up under the jail then you're not getting right like you have to have those real conversations and be willing to be vulnerable to you know to a certain extent um and you use discernment in that but to where they go what miss walker when that was you girl i will i will wrap every part of nug if you buck if you turn it on right now that Girl. was me y'all hear me playing praise music now but that has not always been my testimony yeah. and so just not being afraid of where god brought you from but be willing to share that because somebody needs to hear it because i do see me and then like girl this girl this was you yeah. <laughs> this was you i love so much of what you just said um and just the, even the sharing your testimony piece, um, because I know I have shared with my, a couple of my best friends now. I'm like, oh, yeah, I used to curse. They'd be like, no way, no way. You did not curse. You did not curse. I'm like, baby, don't be fooled by, you know, this, these, these pearls or what, you know, whatever. Yes. Don't be about it. What, it don't really matter what you think you see in me. Trust and believe. Like, and not even from, a, oh, I'm, I was out there like kind of from a bragging standpoint, mm -hmm. but just, it really does show the transformative power yes. of God because mm -hmm. even for people, for me to tell people, Hey, I struggle with suicidal thoughts. I was depressed. They like you, you, you all happy. And you, I, you, yes. some of my teens, they'd be like, you'd be so happy. I'll be like, I think you annoying. And I'm like, Oh baby, if, I, if only you knew yes. how I used to be, they can't believe it. But yeah. that literally is, I think about when, when Paul said in, uh, Corinthians when he said you know if we are comfort it's for your comfort like yeah if, if I've been through something and then I, God delivered me it's not so I can be like oh yeah go me it's it's so I can tell other people my testimony my mom yes says, no I've talked about my money story on here mm -hmm. um, I love that you shared even what you shared about your marriage because people think that you get married when you grown no sometimes you are, your spouse helps grow you up and yes, like you said you praying for them and God's like well while I have you here let's talk about your flaws and he's <laughs> like well Lord clearly you have an attention span issue we're talking about him no, and you yes. know like no it, it was <laughs> your son you know the first book that I ever the movie that did it so I um I had decided that we were going to watch. So our kind of tradition, Resurrection Sunday, is we watch The Passion of the Christ. And I had seen it. But that year, it, it hit me so, like, I was, I always cried, but I was, like, bawling. 
Like, I always tell people, it's one thing to, to say, like, oh, Jesus died for me. To see a, a cinematic depiction, right? So I don't hear, like, oh, but that's not it. Like, just look. Just, just know that the concept is the same. Don't be distracted by all the little idiosyncrasies. Just know that this <laughs> lines up with the word a lot. <laughs> to see that and to be like, for me, like, that, that's a lot. Like, you did that for me? Who? Because let me tell y'all. I wouldn't get my dog for some people. <laughs> like, like for me, you went through all of this for me and I don't even deserve it. How could I not serve you? Then I got a hold of the movie War Room and I was like, oh, and and this was my thought. And this is how how spiritually it was sure I was. I'm about to pray. Okay? And I'm gonna fix you. God's gonna fix you. He's gonna fix this. I'm gonna pray, and this is what we're gonna do. And so I bought the book Fervent by Priscilla Shire. And let me tell y'all, I was at work reading this book, and that's when God gave me that revelation of like, you have to like sometimes you just need to stop talking so he can hear me. And I text my friend and I said, I think God just told me to shut up. And I mean, he's God, so that's cool or whatever, but why he gonna talk to me like this? I don't understand, um, you know, and just really going through and really understanding who God is and everything after that has really, um, has always been a, a stretch because the more that you grow with God, the more he will, he, he can see that he can trust you, the more mature that you get, he'll trust you with things that you've never even imagined. My Gigi um, ended up getting, she had cancer and passed away a couple years ago. And God and her put me in charge of her care and her, like, it was so much. Like, on one hand, I'm her granddaughter. This is my Gigi. I love her. Her smothered potatoes will never be matched in this world. And I want her to live to be 155. But I see over here that I've been called to help her. Like, you know, at, at first I was like, God, why are, you, why are you making me do this? And it, it turned from that to him allowing me to help her transition. Like she was, she was red. Like my grandma was like, look, Joe, I did this whole cancer thing before. Um, I'm almost 80 years old. And she said to me, I got my bags packed and I'm waiting on Jesus. And I was like, you don't have to sound that excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, now I'm like, she was so strong. Like, I want to love the Lord that much that I'm like, bye. <laughs> I've done, she's like, I've done everything that I've been called to do here. Like, she's like, when I see, you know, she got to come to my, um, my graduation for my master's program. Um, she like, you know, she's, she's got to see her kids are grown, her grandkids are grown, um, and her, her great grandchildren are halfway grown. So, so she's lived this full life and I would have never imagined that God would put me in a position to help her, but I, I was, and at that point I was like, I don't want to do this, <laughs> but I did it. And, and now on the other side, it sounds so sad but it honestly was such an honor to be able to be used in a way like that that you could never told me when I was like I'm going to nursing school that I would be able to be such a blessing to someone who was such a blessing to me she my Gigi was everything like everything to everybody um and so even my dad's mom that was her sister they got they got <laughs> pictures together in their black girls rock shirts <laughs> like that was her sister and so you know it it was it was rough but now like god is so good he's so faithful and i I'm, I'm not even tripping like that like that it's hard sometimes but i'm gonna see her again because I know God. I know who he is. I know that he promised me that. In that same year, my dad got, it was in an accident and almost died. The hospital in St. Louis did not do right by him. I had to quit my job, my first nurse practitioner job. It was a whole thing. And my dad is still here. I am a daddy's girl through, like through and through, like through and through, like that is through and through. And to be able to serve him in that manner. And it was like the day after my dad got out of hospice and I finally flew back to Tampa, my grandma called, I was like, remember what I said about you moving? 
well, I'm ready for hospice. Um, because she had moved 10 minutes down the street from me in St. Louis. God had told us to move. And it was two weeks before we left that we found out that her breast cancer was back and had went to her lungs. And so I am freaking out. Our house is sold. I'm leaving. I, how am I supposed to? And I said, Gigi, I, what? <laughs> oh my God, what is this? And I sat down and I was talking to her about it. And I was like, I, I was almost like, God, this can't be right. Um, and she said, haven't you been talking about moving out of St. Louis for so long? And I said, yes. And she said, just know that whether you're here or not, God is going to do what he's going to do regardless. So you need to be obedient to the word that you got. And I was like, okay, <laughs> guess I'm leaving. Um, and she was able to come down here and spend Christmas with us, with us that year. And it was, it was amazing. So she got to kind of see God start the thing in me. And she has made herself known to me even since, cause she told me, she said, I'm not leaving you. I'm just moving. <laughs> Like, I'm moving, I'm moving to heaven. Like, I, I gotta go. And so, you know, I have, I've seen her in my dreams. You know, she, like, I know that she is very much so proud of the things that I'm doing. And honestly, she played a really big role in how I started Hearts Over Habits. I had, before Hearts Over Habits, my fixation was on the fact that my grandmother had breast cancer. And I'm like, we, and then the stuff that happened with my dad and if I wasn't a nurse, my dad would not be here, just flat out. Sometimes I'm a part of the, you know, the black community and the medical community, and sometimes we don't get done right by, by the medical community. And so I'm looking to mend that. And I had started a program called Your Health is Lit, and it was me and my friend Donna. She's a, a public health major, and we promoted health literacy. And it was not taking off the way that I wanted it to, and I was so frustrated. And I was like, God. I thought you wanted me to go out here and talk to these people and help people and reach the nations. And um, I had did a thing where I wanted people to kind of share the faces of, you know, people who've had breast cancer. And I think that post, I got like one like, I got one photo submission. I was upset because to me, I was like, I'm doing this for my Gigi. And God told me that I had confused the circumstance of my grandmother having breast cancer with her identity. He was like, your grandmother was more than breast cancer. So see, that's why you're frustrated. Her, that was her circumstance, but her identity was my daughter. My grandmother was a, um, a Bible school teacher and her, like, her Bible school students with their grandkids were at her memorial service. That's, that's that legacy that I'm talking about. And so God, that's when God was like, what I'm telling you to do is to pick up where she left off and those young women that you spend your lunch hour with, you need to serve them. This whole thing, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, but that's not who she was. I'm calling you to continue the legacy that she left here. And so after I got done ugly crying, um, I got the work. <laughs> I just, there's just so many pieces to that. And, you know, I think it, it goes back to one, I love that you touched on identity because, you know, that's why I started my organization because it was just a book, the black girls, God's living on purpose. I published, not just a book. I want to diminish what God did. You did that Lord, but you, you know, I wrote a book and then um, my aunt encouraged me to do workshops and, when I was doing the workshops and even as I was writing the book, I was just realizing all the different things that we as women put our identities in that are fleeting because at the end of the day, you know, even if you have a multi-million dollar business, you can still have health issues, you know, even with Chad, Chadwick Bozeman yes. um, passing recently, like, and people are just shocked to find out that he had cancer. It just shows like, okay, the best financial circumstances do not, somehow make you 
ineligible for struggles in other areas, or even if it's not you yourself going through those health mm-hmm. things, you have a family member that you have to care for that people don't know about, or, or yeah, you have wealth and you have a big house, but now God's like, okay, now you need to move your family in and, and just these different pieces, right. That people just don't understand. So I love that he said, basically was getting you together. Like, this is not her story. And I'm no. not going to let you paint my daughter. Like yes. just someone. Who yes. He was like, that's my daughter. Mm-hmm. He was like, no, you, you got it wrong. So whenever you want to go and do your restructuring, then we'll talk about what we can do next. Yes. And that really ties into the story of Chadwick Boseman too, right? Like he was not going to allow cancer to be his legacy. He was like, it, it's a circumstance. He was not going to allow cancer to be his identity. This was a circumstance. It was a circumstance. It happened, but that's not who he was. We like he he's our Black Panther. He's our Black superhero. He's our Wakanda forever. And even in that, I was just like, ah, first of all, 2020, get out of here. <laughs> but but also just like, you know what? Like that is so powerful that he was like, what y'all not about to do is be out here trying to baby me because he he was about what God had called him to do in this, in this mountain of media and, and entertainment arts. Like he was like, y'all are not going to sit here and glorify this circumstance. And we do that a lot. Oh, I'm a single mom. That's not what you should lead with. Like, who are you? A single mother is a part of your circumstance. If you've been a victim of abuse, that's not who you are. It's just a circumstance, but that's not your identity. And so, so many times we allow these traumatic circumstances to become our identity. And then we find ourselves depressed and, you know, with anxiety. And then we struggle with those suicidal thoughts and we struggle with frustration. Uh, My aunt had told me that because me and my mom, our relationship had, you know, has not always been great. And I was talking to my aunt about it and she said, you're struggling right now because you don't know who you are and you don't know whose you are. But when you find out, none of this stuff will matter. And she was right. God is so good. Me and my mom, we're, we're good. It's not amazing. I'm not saying that we hold hands and da, 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 but that's my mama and I love her and could nobody ever. <laughs> right. But that the things that you know we experience together that is not the identity of our relationship there it they are circumstances and so just understanding that we have to be careful with how we identify ourselves and other people because one time i because i was growing in the lord i was reading my husband the right act i was giving him the business like I was back. My flesh was like, I'm out here. Um, And God said, stop talking to my son like that. I was like, I mean, okay. (laughs) Right. But he earned, (laughs) but he earned it. (laughs) And we, we talk a lot about being God's daughters, but God had to tell me the same thing. He was like, okay, cool. You my daughter, but that's also my son. And what you're not going to do is disrespect my son. And I was like, I mean, let me pick my edges up. Okay, fine. <laughs> right. There you go. And this was before we got married. He got he got me together before we got married. But I was like, oh, he because I had I had again, y'all, transparency. This was when my husband and I were dating, and I've shared this story, I talk about it in my book. But um, I was cursing him out on our on on our way back from St. Louis. Actually, we had gone to a Cardinals game, and I cursed him out like the whole two hours drive back to Columbia, and. Um, so we had we we talked through it that night but the next day when god knew i could handle it he said how would you feel if jordan talked to you the way you were t-? and i said i wish that i'm just just thinking about it. i was i wish he, he was never never. and god was like do you hear yourself you sound crazy he's like i'm not, this is just the thought of and you actually have disrespected this man with these exact words and now you he said, so I just want you to keep that in mind. And I was like, yes, sir. Got you. You, you know what it is too, is he, God said to me, would you ever allow someone off the streets to talk to your husband the way that you do? If no, you need to change it. And I have said that to a kid in clinic. He was, he was fussing at his mom. I said, hey, 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 first off, no. This is my house, my rules. We were, I don't know what y'all do at home, but you respect your mother in my office because this is my house. 
I said, if one of your friends came over and was talking to your mama like that, would you be cool with that? Uh, no. Nah. I said, why do you do it? He was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, fix it. Don't be in here cutting up. Okay, we respect adults up in here. I don't know what y'all do outside of this office, but in, as for me in my house, <laughs> and this office is my house, you gonna respect your mama in my presence. Okay, okay, great. Dang, Miss Walker, you ain't even, look. Okay, this is my house. So you have to respect her in this space. Now what y'all do at home, child, that's y'all business. But <laughs> <laughs> as far as up in here. Up in here, we're not going for that. Right. And I think, but even in that, I'm sure he was like, wait, what? Yeah, because if somebody off the street came and, you know, even with the stuff with me and my mom and me telling our story, couldn't nobody say, <laughs> couldn't nobody talk about my mama like that? And God's like, that's my daughter too. So I hear you. I'm not like, you know, I, I think too, part of it is that we're always looking for people to to reap what they sow and not understanding that we're sowing seeds in our reactions too. Um, not understanding that at some point we have been the villain in somebody else's story. And so I have to get so busy focusing on me and making sure that I'm being intentional with what I'm doing with the legacy that I'm leaving because now it weighs so much heavier on me because people know that I love God. I love God, right? Like people know, they hear me like coming down the street on a little work, but then you can't cut me off in traffic and I pull up next to you and I'm cussing you out and I'm, and I'm flipping you off because now I'm, I'm not looking like my dad, like my, my heavenly Father. We have to make sure that um, people who see me and my dad look, we're like twin. Like, I look like that man. I just came right out of his body. <laughs> like, I look just like him. But in that same sense, we have to look like our Heavenly Father. And people should be able to tell the difference. And I am always very transparent. This one lady at my job was like, Sharla, you're always so happy and smiley. And, you know, you're always, you know, just. I really just try to grace because we, especially when you work with the population that I work with in the place that I work, grace and mercy <laughs> every day, every day, God. But I tell them all the time, I'm like, y'all, this be Jesus. Y'all give me too much credit. I am several degrees of raggedy. This literally, Mary Mary says to God in me, like this is the Lord. <laughs> I promise y'all before Christ Charla, not the same human, she don't have no job. She might be in jail. Like, we don't know. <laughs> we, we don't know. And, and remaining humble that these women that I serve, they, they didn't do anything different than me, right? Like, that could be me. It could be me. So I'm just grateful for God's hand on my life, for my praying grandmothers, for the favor that he's had on my life. But that could have been me. So being able to empathize with people and really put yourself in their shoes. I've had 15 year old girls tell me, I always ask them, how did you end up in foster care? Because I wanna know, because I care about you. I wanna know your story. And one girl, she was 15 years old. She said, you know, I come here a lot and nobody's ever asked me that question. And I was just like, I care. Like, I, I want to know because that helps me care for you, right? Even when I don't see you, I, like before I go into clinic, I pray, I pray because especially now COVID, who Jesus, like I pray and I, I would do it before. God bless my hands. Help me make, help me have a sound mind to make decisions. Give me the spirit of discernment. If there's something else that I need to look at again, allow me to look at it again. These are your kids. These employees are your kids. The, the babies that I serve, these are your kids. So help me serve them in a way that is pleasing to you because I'm your kid too. And some days I'm not going to have it. And some days I'm not going to feel it. And for her to say like, you know, I've come here a couple times and ain't nobody ever asked me that. And then to tell me her story that her dad was trafficking her for drugs. Like, who's Jesus? Like, 
I'm like, girl, I'm about to cry. <laughs> like, I told her, I said, girl, I'm about to cry. I like, I just like, I just want to hug you. Can I hug you? And she just busts into tears. We didn't even start at the physical. But every time after that, they only want to see me. In the last couple of weeks, I've had maybe three parents send send messages through the call center of like, she she really connected with my daughter and I've needed that because I have been feeling just tired. And God, even in that, knew that. And he's like, girl, keep doing it, girl, I see you. <laughs> like, keep doing it, girl, I see you. Mask and all, <laughs> okay? Face, tire, ears hurt, I, I see you. And it's just such a, a blessing to be able to be used by God to understand not only my identity, but to see people the way that God sees them, right? Like, it's an unpopular opinion, but I don't necessarily agree with the guy in the White House, but I have to keep my mouth up off of him because that's God's, that's God's, that he created him too. Like, that's, that's his too now. Like, so, because I'm responsible for every word that I speak, every action that I take, I'm going to have to account to God for what I said and what I did. So I don't say nothing. I mean, I got opinions, but I keep them to myself because once I, once I speak that thing, I have to, I am accountable for it. So sometimes I just don't say nothing at all because my grandma, my Gigi used to say, you ain't got nothing nice to say. Shut up. <laughs> no, don't say nothing. But understanding that we have to see the world the way that God sees the world um, and operate out of that. And sometimes it's hard. I had a white mama ask me this week with her, with her mixed children in the room who are mixed. Can I ask you a question? Do all brown kids have a weird smell, like a really bad BO? Because my sister's kids, we live with them and my sister's kids don't smell like my kids. It took every part of the Holy Spirit. And this is why I say, like, I'm saved, saved. But just know, like, it's a, we battle with our flesh every day. Paul even said that. Like, it's a battle every day because it took everything in my strength not to be like, oh, so your niece and nephew, you mean like how they smell like what dog? Because I got questions. Why would you say that about these brown children that you birthed? So now I'm like, I'm frustrated, I'm mad. This is Brianna Taylor day. Like I am already on 10 and it was a test. <laughs> I'm like, this is a test. This is a test in my flesh because my flesh has everything to say to you. <laughs> but my, my spirit is gonna pray for these kids because if you're, you don't know me, I've never seen you before. I've never seen these kids. And so if you're so willing to speak so negatively about these brown children that you brought into the world, to me, what are you saying to them at home? What are you saying amongst the people that you really feel comfortable with? And so I had to get out of my flesh to be like, let me pray for these babies. Let me cover these babies because who knows? Like, who knows? But my flesh was like, run up, get done up because you try, <laughs> you are trying it. Why would you ask me that question? And so it's, it's moments like those where I'm like, mm, God, come get your kids. <laughs> Please, God, come get your kids. Cause they are, they're wilding. They are really well on out here. Yeah, it, it again, I, I you talked about grace, and I think that that is um, just true of any season, any any position that you have. Like the grace of God is what keeps you. I know whether it's um being a mom, um, and I know you said you you're not a mom yet, but I rem just last night my boys were screaming, crying like. I, we had just come from my aunt's house and so I was putting them in the bed and both of them were yelling, crying at the same time. And I was like, Lord, I'm so glad I know you. Cause this would like literally drive me up a wall, but I just, I, I didn't get to the point of laughing, but I'm like, this is literally a scene out of a movie where the mm -hmm. mom, you know, the mom would be flipping out. And I was like, I'm good. Y'all go to bed. You feel your feelings. And I mm -hmm. tell my boys that like, it's okay to feel upset. It's okay. So yeah. Grace of God will definitely get you through. Time everything. and everything yes absolutely so now i want to transition to our up close and purposeful segment which are questions we ask 
all of our guests on the podcast. And my first question is, what does it mean to you to be a Black girl with purpose? To be a Black girl with purpose means that I live in my purpose on purpose, that I'm intentional about every day um, doing what God has called me to do and walking in that lane and being so steadfast in him that I'm not allowing the opinions of what people say, um, whether people are people that are close to you, whether people is like the society and how they view and treat black women. Like I'm here to shake the system. I'm here to like, you're going to understand that when we say that black lives matter, it's not just, um, you know, over here, whatever, like you, you can complain about all of these things. Like black lives matter to me um, when I'm at church, when I take care of kids, when I mentor these young girls and not, not just, not just that, but to the point where I'm going to do the work on the inside, like I'm going to come for these systems, but also let me help my sis so she can quit get, getting asked. She's not asking people to get flued out. Like, don't, don't do that. <laughs> so it's just being very intentional about making sure that I am intentional about the lives that I touch every single day. I love that last part, intentional about the lives that you touch every day. Uh, what are your go-to scriptures when you need encouragement? <sighs> Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, Romans eight twenty eight. All of Ephesians, <laughs> just all of it. <laughs> like Ephesians gets me together. Like, okay, it Ephesians allows me to do kind of like a self-check. Are you acting in this, 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 and this? If not, your flesh is showing, sis. And so we gotta go back <laughs> to the closet at the altar, do some work. Um, and honestly, a lot of times too, um God will bring to remembrance parts of the Bible, even if I can't lay my finger on the scripture. And that is what I love about God. Like that is so, it's so personal. Um, and I really recently now I'm in um, Psalms 103 and it really, we've been talking about identity and I read this with my Bible group um, earlier this week, and it, has re it really has just hit home for me. It really just lays out who God is, his identity, and who we are to him. And that blessed me so much this week. Like, he is not angry. He loves you. He, you know, he's, it just kind of, like, allow me to introduce myself to you again. <laughs> um, and I just, I love that. But yes, um, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for my good. And I've had to really understand that even though it's working together for my good, that does not mean that it will feel good all the time. And I always remind myself of that, like Charlotte, this is working for your good. I don't know how, I don't know where I'm gonna see that, but I know that God is not a man that he shall lie. And so I'm a, I'm a hold on to this word. <laughs> Show me, Lord, where this is supposed to <laughs> like show me something. Like Romans eight twenty eight, it just does something to me. Like this is working together for your good. The bad days working together for your good. The good days working together for your good. Um, the stuff with my Gigi working together for my good. The stuff with my dad it worked together for my good. Um, even the stuff with my marriage worked together for my good. And God, I. <laughs> I always say, like, God is undefeated. Like, if you check his resume, it's, it's the best. And I actually had wrote a, I made a journal, um, published a journal in January called Check God's Resume. And it was really for me because I was like, you know what, God? That, like, because I have to really remind myself, when you're really feeling like God is not with you, you feel like he forgot about you, go back and recall, like, go check his resume. Right, because there was a time, one time, me and my friend Alexis, we went prom dress shopping and we stayed at the mall longer than we were supposed to. We were at Mid Rivers Mall. You may know where that is in O'Fallon, Missouri. <laughs> Mid Rivers Mall. I did not want to call my dad and say, honestly, her brother didn't come pick us up because I was like, I'm gonna be in trouble because I should have been called him. So I decided I was gonna walk down the highway 
I'm walking down 270. It's dark. And the whole time I am praying, I'm like, God, if you get me out of this, <laughs> it was one of those, like, if you get, if I can just get home and not die, I will never do this again. Not even 30 seconds later, car pulls up and it's this guy. He's like, look, old, and he was, he was an older white guy. He said, look, I can't just leave you here <laughs> walking. It's 10 o'clock at night. He's like, this is my ID. I will give it to you. I have a pregnant wife at home. I just want to drop you off where you need to be. And I was like, I could either get hit by a car or end up on the first 48. So like, you know what, God, I'm gonna trust you. And that man took me home. And I don't even think my dad knows that story to this day. So sorry, dad. But it's moments like that. Like he ain't forgot about me. I got a Holy Spirit Uber at 17. <laughs> like, are you for real? <laughs> he ain't forgot about me. That that psych test that I passed was all him. He was like, oh, you, you need you need it extra day? Lights out. <laughs> like, like it's those small things that we that we can seem to forget about. But when you really recall everything that God has done for you in your life, don't ever let the enemy try to trick you that he he's for he's never left me even when i wasn't consistent with him so god all by himself like the whole bible i i do i really do love the bible um the way that i hear and see the stories in my head are funny to me sometimes like god cracks me up like jesus went to the temple at 12 Mary was like, why did you do this? He gave her an answer that was all Holy Spirit. But then that man was on punishment for 18 years. Next time we hear about him, he's 30 years old. <laughs> I was like, did you, was he on punishment? Like, I have questions about what was going on over those 18 years. Because Mary was like, what you say? Get on this donkey. Let's get one. Let's go. Let's go. And so I really do love the Bible because God speaks do it to me all the time, all the time. So, but the way that I, I hear it and I see it, I'm like, <laughs> girl, first of all, <laughs> like some of this stuff is crazy. And then some of it too, you know, we kind of say, we take light, like very lighthearted. God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Okay. I'm glad that you know that, but don't play with his grace, right? Like he's the same God go back to Exodus, people was just dying. Do not play with him. <laughs> like that Old Testament smoke is not it. So keep your life, <laughs> like, like, like pull it together. Because I think that sometimes we lose that because people want to kind of romanticize God and Jesus, but like, he's the same God. I'm glad you know. Read yeah, the first whenever I think about God <laughs> and like the stuff that scared me and when I realize grace is when the husband and wife lied about how much property they got. I'm like, so they just dropped dead? <laughs> I'm mean, like, Lord, yes, yes. <laughs> thank um, you Safara, for grace. Safara and uh, whatever her name, his was name like, was. Bruh, they just, and, he was like, oh, you going to lie? The Testament. Right, that's what I said. And I'm like, he don't, he, I just was like, so God the was like, oh, so you're going to lie? So mm -hmm. you're going to lie. Okay, dead. What? <laughs> like, I just... That's the one that humbles me real quick. I'll be like, I'll yes. be faster if it load. I'm so glad you right There was a story. One time I was listening to the, um, what's the Bible that T.D. Jakes and all of, you know, like Monique, everybody's reading the, the Bible story. And I was up late because I couldn't sleep and I'm listening to it. And there's a part in Exodus. And I don't remember because I was just listening to it where these people were talking bad about their leadership. They were talking bad about Moses. And long story short, they, they were like, if y'all feel like this, stand over here. And then the earth opened up and swallowed them whole. And I said, I said, I said, you know what? Hey, Google, turn it off. Turn it, turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. That really convicted me about what I speak about people who are in position of power. So I ain't got nothing to say about that orange man. I ain't got nothing, nothing. I'm going to just stay praying because what's not about to happen to me is this earth going to open up and swallow me whole. Not. <laughs> uh-uh.
<laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I can't play with you. I'm good. Like, this is too much. I'm not. She's, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Google, turned it off. I'm, 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 I'm off. about to have nightmares about being swallowed up. Turn it off. But no, it really, I'm glad you brought that point up because we do often kind of just because we've quote unquote evolved as people we try to act like god is like oh well you know i don't want to offend so yes you do what you oh uh, no no obey me like and i love we're, we're in a series for my uh the church that i came from in new orleans and so i that's one thing i love about this time that we're in is that i get to still watch online mm-hmm. in addition to my church here um but the series that they're in is called honor culture and they're talking about like the reason why we struggle so much with honoring people is because we live in a democratic society where everybody votes on everything. Do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? And he's like, we're kingdom citizens. So you're trying to bring your democratic mind to a kingdom like situation. And God's like, no, you you don't get a vote. Like this is not about you. And, And like you said earlier, okay, you don't want to be obedient, cool. I'm going to use somebody, like the work is still going to be done. I want it to be done through you, but if it's not, okay, the work's still going to be done. But then also, even with that scripture, because that comes out of Esther, like her cousin's like, and you're going to be punished. You and your family will die. Like, and so we, a, a lot of times we're like, oh, he's just going to use somebody else. Yeah, but then you're going to reap some punishment. So can you just get an alignment, please? That'd be yes. great. Yes, and too, again, you know, o- obedience on my podcast, I talk about how, you know, your obedience is better than your sacrifice. God, like, okay, you fed the homeless children in Africa. Cool, cool, cool. That's not what I asked you to do, right? And when you think about, when I think about God, um, I think a lot of times, especially in our culture and, and you know, even in Black culture, that the role of the father has been so distorted. And, you know, with people not having fathers or, you know, there's so many things that really kind of plague us that we don't understand and we don't, there are girls that don't trust God because they don't trust their own dads and that you cannot hold God to that same standard, but the relationship should resemble. My dad is my best friend. I talk to him and I'm like, I could call him right now and be like, what up? (laughs) Just like that. However, in my 30 years of age, I will never in my life step out of pocket because staff sergeant ain't playing those games. (laughs) Like, I'm, but I still know that's my dad. We can laugh. We can hee hee ha ha. We can do all the things. But when he tells me to do something, he said what he meant. He meant what he said, and it's to get done. In that same sense with God, he wants to walk. He, he walked with Adam in the cool of day. He wants to know all the things. He wants us to live exceedingly and abundantly. He wants to bless us. But when he tells you to do something, it's not up for debate. He said what he said, and it needs to get done expeditiously, <laughs> like, and with fervor and a good heart and, and all and all the things, because sometimes we will get in positions and then you forget that, and then you end up like Saul, who just was out here after he was like, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice some animals myself. No, <laughs> like, like, no. So, you know, throughout all of this, as your success continues, you have to remain humble to God and who he is because you will lose it. And just because people are in position, and this is why like that comparison culture and social media will have you tripped. People can be, Saul lost the blessing of God and was still in position for like decades after that. He was still like, God was like, you know what? I got somebody else. You, you, have your way like do do what you i'm gonna leave to yourself i'm gonna choose david and even then he was still in position so from the outside he's still the king but he lost he lost that like do not get caught up like oh they look like they went in no (laughs) no that's dangerous that's dangerous i worry about what god tell me to do because that's what i have to answer to (laughs) And that's what you'll be judged on is what yeah. you're called to do, not what you did. Like you said, even you over here, a missionary and guys like, okay, but I wanted you to be a teacher in Detroit. Yeah. Well, Lord can't hear you right now. I'm on a mission trip. Like, okay. 
Okay. It's still, it's still disobedient. So. Yeah. Um, last couple of questions. What do you find yourself most grateful for in this season? Uh, in this season, just God's covering. Um, particularly because, you know, I mean, like, at the very basic sense, I have not got COVID and I've been on the front lines the whole entire time. I've had coworkers, I've had friends, I've had, and, and God has continued to cover me and my family. Um, I've, my friends who did have it, it was, there were two of them that it did not look well and God healed them and healed their bodies. And so I'm just grateful for his covering um, and just the power of, of prayer that he hears me, he hears my prayers and he just continues to be way greater than he has to be. Like he, I don't be deserving it. <laughs> like I just don't. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then my next question is how can our listeners best support the work that you're doing? So I know that it's a, because your per program is virtual, people mm -hmm. can apply to be mentors. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes. So you can apply to be a mentor. Um, we also, if you want to volunteer, you know, we are, we are building an online academy, the Hearts Over Habits Life Academy, where we are teaching courses. So we'll have core, we have core courses. Those are those evidence-based practice courses that help them with like developing relationship and um, dealing with, you know, how to kind of gauge their emotions and, you know, just those kinds of things. But then, you know, we have courses about like budgeting and, um, you know, how to do your makeup for an interview, those kinds of things. So you can volunteer um, to help like behind the scenes, you can volunteer to teach a course, you can be a mentor, um, you can always support, um, you, can, you can donate, you can buy shirts. Honestly, just telling people um, that if you have a young adult, you don't have to be in a vulnerable population to be a part of it. Honestly, we want to help everybody. It's just that our focus is particularly those young women because they don't have that. But even just sharing the message of, you know, like, look, there's an organization doing this with young women that you may be, um, be connected to um, is always, always a blessing. So any of those ways, and we have um, just lots of great things. Like, I'm so excited about the stuff that God is doing. Um, we do, um, I have a podcast called God Goals and Girl Talk, and we do like monthly events. We do Bible studies. Um, so there's just a lot of fun and cool things that we do. And then when this academy goes off, it's going to go off. Like the stuff that God is like changing, I'm like, come on, God. This is why you in charge, <laughs> because this is so good. Yeah, he, he's not limited by our capacity At or all. our thinking, which is such a blessing. <laughs> And then I always love to have my guests share one last piece of knowledge, wisdom, or encouragement um, just to get them through their week or something that they can go back to and say, okay, wait, Charlotte said, this is what I need to do. So I'm just going to keep that in mind as I'm working. Yes. Charlotte said that God's already given you everything you need to do what he's called you to do. Do not feel like because it's not perfect, that God won't honor it. Perfectionism is glorified procrastination. Oh, I gotta wait for it to be perfect, because that was me. And so it doesn't have to be perfect. You need to start now, even if it's a small thing, because it's those baby steps that are going to add up. You're gonna look, I didn't just look up one day, like, oh, I got a nonprofit. It's like, today I'm gonna do this, Tomorrow I'm gonna do that. It, it's not, you know, literally, it's not built in a day. Um, don't despise those small beginnings. And every purpose is not connected to a gigantic platform. God may have called you to be that teacher in Detroit. God may have called you to just serve the two and three kids that you have. Like that, like, so just remain faithful. God, get, you're fully equipped. God has given you everything that he's called you to. And just trust the process and love the process because the process gets you ready for the promise. 
the process gets you ready for the promise, boo. Did you hear that? Um, I love just everything you said. It's been really encouraging. I, I hope that y'all will, if you did, weren't listening to this with a notebook and some paper with a, and a pen, <laughs> go back and write some stuff down. Definitely come and listen again. Um, but, and, and I'll make sure I put a link to your website and to your social media and your podcast as well so um just share our your social media and your website with our with our listeners before you sign off yes so you can follow hearts over habits on instagram at hearts over habits tampa you can follow me at the pdnp like pediatric nurse practitioner um, on instagram Um, on facebook we have a facebook community where we have all of our different bible studies and things that we do um and it's it's hearts over habits incorporated um the podcast god goals and girl talk every wednesday it be me and god it really be god because <laughs> the stuff that he says to me on that podcast be crazy <laughs> um god goals and girl talk on all streaming platforms and just yeah i'm excited thank you so much brianna this was amazing <laughs> No, I really enjoyed it. It's funny. Sometimes when I'm on the podcast, I forget that I'm recording (laughs) because it just feels like a conversation, um, you know, that I'm just having with somebody over coffee or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But I shared with uh, our listeners last on last week's episode. I hope y'all can see why the Black Girls of Purpose podcast even got started because I was doing these interviews with women to create blog posts from them. And I just, I was like, I'm not doing this justice by trying to type up their responses. But when you mm-hmm. can hear the laugh and the pause and um, even now, now we, now we have our podcast on my YouTube channel, which I, ugh, that's so much obedience because I promise y'all your girl was not trying to be on YouTube, Look. but <laughs> um, you know, now you can see facial expressions and everything else. Uh, it really is a blessing. And I hope that you guys were encouraged by something that was said today. Um, I want to reemphasize what Charlotte said only because it literally mirrors something that was said last week, which is that you already have everything you need. Y'all just get started. If you feel like yes. you're struggling to get started, you know that our activate community helps you move from idea to action. So you can go to blackgirlsofpurpose.org forward slash activate because y'all know I'm about what it's like what are we doing though because I, I I have I have failed enough times to be able to say okay get up sis like you said you launched two years ago and you haven't relaunched since then no we're gonna brush off and we're gonna keep moving so uh, again thank you so much Charlotte for being on the podcast you are a wonderful guest you had so many um, nuggets that you gave to our listeners and I know that they were encouraged by it and I hope that even in the way that you shared how you shine for God at work that other people who may not even have a business or even desire to start a business can say hey this is a way that god can use me in my current environment because that's your ministry wherever you are is your ministry wherever you are is your purpose if you're not faithful at your job why would god give you a whole business <laughs> like it requires more so yeah man i am so grateful and i'm just thankful that you're being obedient to everything that god has called you to and i just pray that god continues to restore you and refresh you and that you are blessed, you know, 10 times, you know, 10,000 bajillion times over for just the things that the seeds that you plant, that you are able to see the fruit and that God continues to restore you and refresh you because pouring out takes a lot. So God bless you, girl. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it.